Hello tubers, welcome to the unboxing video. Today we have an FTX Outlaw. I've chosen it deliberately because when we're in the model shop, um, not that we've got the world's greatest experience, but occasionally we do interact with other customers and whatnot. And we've been saying, always get brought the Traxxas Stampede. I can't stress how indestructible that little model is. Well, a question was put to me today is it worth spending twice the money on the Traxxas Stampede? And I said, no, I can't answer that honestly. So today I'm going to answer that question and give you an honest review here on the channel. Now, for $124.99, you can get this from various different model shops in the UK. It's the FTX Outlaw. Um, my first impressions were I didn't particularly like it. It's very plasticky. Now, I've seen a few different videos and especially some slow-mo stuff and it does kind of give the impression that not always is thick, strong materials better. This stuff can flex and seems to take the abuse. So I want to know, can it really take the abuse? So you get everything you want in the box for that price except four AA batteries and I believe that's just for the... Uh, controller. We'll soon find out. We're going to open her up. As you can see, this is going to be genuine. I don't know what you do really get and I don't know what you don't get. So let's get her open. Right and that's spun round. Pop that out of the way. Well, As you can see so far, it is fully packed. Packaging's quite good. There's a bag of goodies down there. You always get silica gel and products these days. Very nice looking vehicle. You get a spare full size wheel. I'm guessing in here is gonna be the rear uh, transmitter. Well, I've not seen one of these yet. No, the box lines. You're going to need eight double A's. I'm positive the box says four, but we won't split hairs at this point in the channel. I see Mr. Williams just off camera having a gander. Um, that feels quite heavy already. Very nice in the back here. We've got a bind button, power LED, G full flow, got a throttle and steering reverse. We've got a steering trim, throttle frame. I'm not sure if, if that one's um, steering. Ah, oh, steering jewel rate, that's what it was. I couldn't quite think. That telling whether your model can have full 90 degrees or limiting it to only just a little bit of turning. Um, I won't say gash, because that's okay. It's not as good as Traxxas. And we all know how I feel about them bloody receivers or transmitters. All right. You get your standard charger, you get an antenna tube, you've also got the American plug, two pin plug, your destructions, no additional stickers by the looks of it. It's not a huge problem. All right then. This is one tenth scale. Oh, there's another box. We'll look at that in a second. Right then, there's the outlaw itself. Hmm, it's giving me some more. Thicker fluid. What was that you just noticed? Oh, hold on. We've got a cable tie holding something down. Ah, yeah. oh, okay. It might be a bit compressed already. We'll take a look at that in a minute. 
place for the AA batteries if FTX while I send you some. Empty. Right, let's take the body off and have a look inside. No spare R clips in the uh, packaging. I think the body. Am I in the spring? I think the body's quite nice looking. You get a cut of spark overload. They're fake, obviously, so they're not being sponsored. Already my first qualm with the model. Come in. Are we still in focus? It's just about big dark. They're glued on these tyres. They're rock crawling type tyres, as you can see. They deform very easy, with very light pressure. I think that's okay. It looks rather nice. It looks very tasteful. For the money, I think it's very nice looking kit. Now, as we knew, you get a 8,000 is this? Might even be 800 milliamps. Oh, no, 1,800. <whistles> that should last all of 12 minutes. We're timed that and we'll let you know. But we're going to shove that on charge. In a moment, I should bring the camera in closer for you guys. Um, I'm going to give you my first impressions from what I can see here. There ain't no suspension at the front. That's very poor, in my opinion. The back, however, has got loads. This might be good for getting you giddy on the long field, you know. But the front, oh, there's just nothing there, hardly. That. I think we're going to see what it's like out of the box, but I think ultimately we're going to shove yeah, you know, some thicker shock oil in there and sort that out. That'll, that'll definitely help, man. That's way too, way too soft. Now, they are oil fillable. They're supposed to be oil in them, I'm told. Although from the feel of it, it does feel like air. But the back, different kettle of fish altogether. That's got loads of travel in it. That front, it's got none and it's well, very limited and very soft. Now, it's a cross between a bit of a basher and um, a rock crawler. As you can see from just spinning the rear wheels, it's not got a locked rear diff. One's going that way, well, other one's going that way. And the same story going up the front. To start with, I'm just going to play with this like it is, and then I'm going to lock those diffs up. Because I think I'd like to have this as a bit of a rock crawler. Yeah, we'll see how we get on with it. Right then, tubers, bringing her in closer. As you can see, it's just some cheap old ESC, electronic speed controller. You'll see what I mean now at the front. Look, in close. What's that, about an inch? at the back incredible amount of travel and the axle twist is very much of a, a crawler here at the back look at that what have we got we can put underneath it yeah that's about the height of a coke can this hobby ring box Very crawler territory looking suspension at the back, but a different story yet again at the front. It seems to me like it's an all and out crawler on its rear and a basher up front. Oh, oh I don't know. I think that might, maybe I was being unfair to start with. Oh, look at that, no. Well, I'll take that back, tubers. Just spinning it back round, there around to the side. I tell you what it has got, it's got cooling fins on the uh, brush motor. You don't see that very often, although it's getting more and more popular these days. I think it's a 550 can in there. We'll get that aerial antenna on in a minute. Um, it is very flexible, that's for sure. So the material, I stand by it, the Traxxas material I think is better, but 
you know, it swings around about. This stuff can, you know, deflect, you know, on impacts. Then perhaps it is saving itself from being broken in the long run, where the Traxxas is definitely a little bit firmer. Now, interestingly, tubers, we can play around with the geometry of the uh, rear suspension unfold. I mean, look, all the different shock settings we can use here, even the, uh, I'm not sure what you call these, these arms, you know, trailing, trailing are they tra they're, they're the trailing arms, aren't they? What are these ones? Yeah, it's not a stain, right? It's like a link arm. Isn't it? Link arm, yeah. We're not sure what they're called, you know. So it certainly does sound a bit clunky. Let's give it one more drop test on slow mo. Right, I've just put one of my original Tamiya batteries in it, just so we can have a little look at it live. The battery it came with is still on charge. Now, you can always turn your transmitter on first, guys, because that's on already. You can, uh, you can always uh, turn this on without having to take the body off. Now, not particularly fast servo, but then, my battery may not be at the peak of charge. It's been sat on the shelf since March, maybe. <laughs> Says it all. That particular battery is knackered, but that's probably gonna be quite quick. The servo seems okay. It's with the battery in it, sprung all right. Looking at it, and Mr. Williams has had a look at it with me. We both agree for one hundred and twenty-four ninety-nine. That's an incredible bit of kit, really, isn't it, Mr. Williams? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'd rather spend more money, but I think if I was given this, I don't think I'd be too disheartened by it. It's not so bad. I think if you can afford something a bit better, then always go out and do that. Stay within your budget, and if your budget is around £100 plus, I don't think that's a bad choice. Anyway, join us again soon when we're going to take this up the woodlands, and we're going to give it its first bit of abuse. We're going to try and air this little bugger out and see what happens, because if it breaks, it breaks. It's not a big deal, it's only £125. Pocket money can cover this model. Anyway, till next time, two bag.